Moving along from the previous slide in the presentation, we're now in the AutoCAD web app. And I haven't shown you the login page purely because it's pretty mundane watching me log in and put my password in. But you'll notice it, the URL in the browser is web.autocad.com. That's the URL for the AutoCAD web app. Now, what we're going to have a look at first are the AutoCAD web and mobile folders. Now, they're here. Now, because I'm logged in using my Autodesk account, like I can log in using my Autodesk account in the AutoCAD desktop app, it means that I can save to these folders, the AutoCAD web and mobile folders. But I can also use other storage providers for connectivity, collaboration. So I can add storage providers here and they will show up in this list on the left. So I can use things like Dropbox and Autodesk Docs and things like Google Drive, for example. All of these are supported by the AutoCAD web app and the AutoCAD mobile app. Now, obviously, I can't show you the AutoCAD mobile app. It's a bit difficult to show you my phone screen when I'm trying to record. There are apps that allow me to do that, but I'm going to use the AutoCAD web app to show you how these changes can be made when you're mobile and on the road with, say, the web app or the mobile app. The workflow and the process is very, very similar. So let's have a look at this core AutoCAD technology that I've talked about in the presentation so far. I've got an Autodesk University 2021 folder there, and it's 1031 Southeast Madison is the example. So when I go into the web and mobile folders, you can see I've got some blocks there in a standard folder library there, and we've got some drawings as well, as you can see. So we've got the ground floor plan, floor plan and details, and so on. I'm going to go to this one here, just the floor plan and details drawing. Now you'll recognize the drawing icon, the little blue and yellow icon representing the DWG file. So I'm going to click on floor plan and details and that'll open up now. Now it does take a few minutes. It depends on your internet speed. And also if you're out and you're mobile, you might need to hook up to your phone data plan to get access to the internet and so on and so forth. So it does take a little bit of time just to get into the drawing. So there's our 1031 Southeast Madison drawing. It's a floor plan with some details. You've got some grids, got some dimensions, furniture, and so on. And what we're gonna have a look at is how all of this works together. So what we've got up here is we've got properties, layers, blocks, XREFs, traces, which is new to the 2022 version of AutoCAD, and we can even include Lisp programming now. So Lisp programming is also available in the AutoCAD web app. I'm going to go back up to the properties tab now, as you can see. Now, the other thing I can do as well is move around in the drawing as well. So you'll notice at the moment I'm in the model tab. I've also got the ISO A1 landscape tab, which takes me into a layout, as you can see. If I zoom out slightly and pan, you can see there's my sheet of paper with my viewport. And I've also got a default layout there with a default viewport as well. Let's jump back to the model tab. Now you can see the core AutoCAD technology already the model tab, the layout tabs. You've got the status bar down here as well on the right. So all of this technology is laid out in a way that when you move from your AutoCAD desktop app, you go into something like the web app and you can see how easy it is to transition between the two when you're out there and you're mobile and you're on the road. The phone app, the mobile app, AutoCAD mobile app is very similar as well. And you might use that on an iPad or a smartphone, for example. So let's have a little look at the trace feature that we talked about a moment ago, this traces here. Now traces is a new feature in the 2022 version of AutoCAD desktop app and obviously the web and mobile app. It's all part of your subscription when you sign up to AutoCAD 2022. Now, what we've got here with traces is we can apply traces to the drawing in the web app and also in the mobile app. The workflow is exactly the same. And I'm going to come into this later on as well. I'll show you how this works in the next sort of part of the video too. Now we've got layers, as I mentioned, and properties. So I can select something. I can select, say, that block there. If I zoom in a bit, let's select that block that forms the table there. You can see it's a block there. Block reference properties, layer, etc. in the properties palette area there. 
And you'll also notice as well, what I really love, because it's web-based, it's saying new object selection options available. So what it means is I can select objects in different ways because I've got a slightly newer version of the AutoCAD web app. And the good thing is because it's web-based, Autodesk, the development team, can drop these new updates in straight away and everybody who's logged in to the AutoCAD web app has got those new features straight away. We've also got things like layers, so I can select that there and we've got a layer there and I can change the current layer just by clicking on it like so, it highlights the current layer. Also we've got a layer drop down up here as well which is extremely useful and you may recognize that from the desktop app. Again, it's that technology that we've got coming from the AutoCAD desktop app, the core technology. Now, one of the things we've also got here is WYSIWYG. Now, you may have heard that back in the day. Um, it's a little bit old fashioned now. I'm just going to hit escape a couple of times to deselect everything. I'm also going to zoom out so that we can see all of the plan. Now, the reason I say WYSIWYG is when you look at this, WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. So if I zoom in real close on something now, that's why I zoomed out, you can see the detail improves, but also more importantly, look at how clean and precise everything is in the model tab, just like the desktop app. And that's this WYSIWYG concept. It basically means that when you zoom in to see more detail, you are seeing what you're actually going to get in your drawing. That's how it works. And zoom and pan are the same as the desktop app as well. I can roll back on my wheel and zoom out, roll up on my wheel and zoom in, hold down the wheel, there's pan like so. I can also right click and I can zoom extents. There's a shortcut menu, albeit a very short shortcut menu. So there's zoom extents in there as well. Now, what we're gonna have a look at here is just some of the information on the drawing itself. And what I want to look at is this sort of area around here. So I'm gonna zoom in close. We've got the copy supply room and we've also got the hot desking area here. Now, the hot desking area text is kind of in the wrong place and I also want to change it as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit that and we're going to edit the height of the text as well. So if I select that text, do you recognize that? It looks just like the multi-line text in the desktop app. That's because it is. Now, if I double click on that, you'll see that I can edit the text very quickly and easily. I've got a little editing area there and I'm going to change this to break room like so. And I'm typing this in and I'm doing all of this in a browser. Think about that for a moment. AutoCAD in a browser. This is one of the best features of your AutoCAD subscription. It means that you can just jump into a browser and open up your drawing quickly and easily. You don't have to wait for AutoCAD to boot up. You can just jump in, make some quick changes and sort things out quickly. So I'm going to change the height of that to 200. Hit the little tick there and you can see that that is now changed to break room in the drawing very quick and easy to do. And bear in mind, when you're in the web app, it's all multi-line text. There's no single line text. The good thing is, the changes in this particular drawing that I'm making, when I save it, will reflect in all of the apps across my Autodesk account. So my desktop app, web app, and mobile app. So as soon as I save these changes, the next person to come into this drawing using whichever app will see those changes. Now, let's start looking at those layers that I mentioned earlier. There's the layers tab there, like so, and you'll notice I can just click and I can make it smaller and bigger just by clicking on these icons here. I want to be able to see them at this point in time. So what we've got there is, again, the same functionality as the desktop app, the core AutoCAD technology. So there's your layers list. You can slide up and down, like so. There's all my layers there in the drawing itself. And what I can do there, I can freeze and thaw layers as well. So I'm just going to right click and zoom extents. And what I want to show you here is I'm just going to freeze and thaw some layers. I'm going to freeze and thaw the dimensions here, the red ones. So there's the dim layer, the red one, as you can see. I've also got a dim 48 layer. I'm not going to worry about that one too much. But what I can do is I can hover over it and just click. Can you see the light bulb there? When I click on that, it literally freezes that particular layer. Now, it is a freeze and thaw and an on and off at the same time. It doesn't really matter in the web app. However, in the desktop app, obviously you've got freeze and thaw and on and off. So how does that work? How do I freeze and thaw and on and off? Well, I can't turn off the active layer, but I can turn on a layer that is already off, like so. So you'll see it comes back when I click on the little light bulb symbol in the layer list.
I can also lock and unlock. So if I go back to that dim layer, there's the little padlock. If I click on that, padlock is now showing for that layer. And you can see it's partially grayed out in the drawing area. Again, core AutoCAD technology, just like the desktop app. And I click on the padlock again, unlocks the layer, and it becomes a little bit more vibrant and colorful again. Layer colors, quick and easy to change. So you click on the square, there's the red there. I'm going to change that color to this purple color here, 191. And you'll notice it now matches the grid lines. Very quick and easy to do. I can also change it back again just by selecting the red there. But also I can use the AutoCAD color index. If I go more colors, there's the AutoCAD color index. I can pick the colors, choose what I want, job done. Very quick and easy. Now we can change the current drafting layer just by selecting the layer, as I mentioned earlier. So I can go to the A010D dim layer, just click on it. Can you see it highlights with that little bar, letting me know that that is the current drafting layer. Bear in mind, we've also got the layer dropdown, which also with a little blue tick indicates which is the current drafting layer. Very, very quick and easy to do. Adding a new layer, you just click on new layer. As you can see, the selection window has kicked in where I've clicked once too often. Just hit escape a couple of times, just like you do in the desktop app. Click on the new layer there and I can put a new layer in. Now the new layer, I'm going to call it AU 2021 because we're at Autodesk University 2021. And I'm going to press enter for the name. Now, obviously that's sorted it alphabetically. So I need to go find that up in the A's. So let's have a look. There it is there. And I'm going to change the color and I'm just going to make that red for now, like so. So my AU 2021 layer is red. I'm going to click on it and make it the current drafting layer as well. Now, what we've got now is a layer all set up to work in the drawing. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to change some settings. We're going to go over to the top right part of the web app and settings is just here. So before we start doing any drafting at all, what we need to do is look at these particular settings to make sure that they're basically doing what we want them to do. Similar to what you do in the desktop app. You go down to the status bar, drafting settings and so on. So we've got preferences. So what preferences have we got? We've got selection settings, we've got the web standard or the desktop standard. We've also got light and dark theme. You can also enable usage reporting, which allows the guys developing the AutoCAD web app to gain access to your usage of the app. And what it does is it collects data. It's anonymous data, I hasten to add, and it allows Autodesk to improve the web app. Tracking. Polar tracking can be switched on, that's always useful. And I'm gonna set that to increments of say 90 degrees, like so. Object snaps, again, drafting settings that you're used to, core AutoCAD technology. Now, the ones that I normally leave on by default, both in the desktop app, the web app, and the mobile app, are endpoint, midpoint, intersection, extension, and center. They're my five go-to running object snaps that I leave on all the time. Units as well, you can set your units. Entirely up to you how you set your units. I'm working in a metric drawing at the moment, so I've got everything set to decimal, but you can change the settings to your recognized core AutoCAD settings if you wish. Same with the degrees as well. You've got things like degrees, minutes, and seconds, surveyors, units, and so on. They're exactly the same as the desktop app. Navigation, do you want the zoom direction to be standard or reversed? Entirely up to you. Once you've set those settings though, you just click on done, and you're ready to go. So there's your settings all set up. Now I'm gonna zoom in to this area here. I want to add a barrier here between each of the hot desking areas. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna use the draw tab. Now all of my tools are here. Can you see we've got the draw tab, annotate, modify. I'm gonna to go to draw like so, and I want to be able to draw a line. Now when I click on line, notice what happens to the command line at the bottom of the screen. Specify first point come into the drawing area and I can use my object snaps. Recognize those green object snaps, just like the core AutoCAD technology in the desktop app. So I click and I drag, get the endpoint there, click there, enter to finish. The workflow is exactly the same. Now, we've also got noun verb selection switched on in the AutoCAD web app. So I can go and select a line like that and as soon as I select that line that I've just drawn you'll notice it goes to modify down here in the modify selection so I want to copy this line so I'm going to use the copy command the icon looks the same as the copy command in the desktop app and again look at the command line at the bottom of the screen I've got specify base point 
So I'm going to use the base point over here, like so, just zooming slightly there with my wheel just to get a bit closer. And what I've got is this point here like this. And I'm just going to use pan. I can pan in the middle of a command, just like I can in the desktop app. And I'm going to pop a little red line on the end of each of these hot desking areas and just press enter to finish. So there's my copy done quickly and easily. Now what I am going to do as well is I'm going to change this from workstations here. I'm going to double click here. This is now going to become the hot desking area. So I'll just type that in very quickly and easily. And let's change that height. It looks a bit random. Let's make that 200 like we did the break room text. And we click there like so. So there's our hot desking area. Now it kind of overflows, but you've got the grips. So I click on the grip, click and drag, and I can make that bigger or smaller if I want to. Can you see there? I can just drag that along, click there, hit escape to deselect, job done. So those grips are just like the multi-line text grips, the M-text grips in your desktop app. So I'm zooming out slightly now so I can see what I'm doing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to work with all of the text in the drawing. Now you'll notice we've got some square footage measurements. So just select all of them. And again, it's just like the desktop app as you work your way around. Can you see? You can select all the objects just clicking around. It's a cumulative selection like so. I'm losing all of these square footage measurements because it's a metric drawing. So we're just updating. The drawing has been scaled to metric and we're removing all of those. So you can see them all selected. All I've got to do now is hit delete on the keyboard, just like the core AutoCAD technology in the desktop app. So that's all updated. We've changed all of that and you'll notice any new text that we're putting in is also updating to the text style and the font in the original drawing. What happens though, if I go to annotate now and I want to place some regular text, let's pick a point here. Let's pick a point here like so, and we'll say that this is the kitchen. So I'm gonna just type in kitchen like so, and we'll give that a height there of say 200 again, and we'll click. Now you'll notice the text, it's on the wrong layer, obviously, because I've got the AU 2021 layer going, but the text looks different. Why does it look different? Well, it uses simplex whenever you create new text entities in the browser. The reason being is the browser doesn't have that support for fonts like your desktop app might. So don't worry about that. It's in there. The text is in there. You just go into it in the desktop app later on and update it to the appropriate textile and layer. It's very quick and easy to do. So what I'm going to do now is zoom out slightly again, and we've got undo and redo. So if I undo what I've just done, it undoes the zoom that I've just done. And then you'll notice the kitchen text disappears because I've done an undo on that as well. We've also got here zoom extents and zoom window. There's zoom extents like so. And we've also got zoom window as well. So again, core AutoCAD technology. When you click on zoom window and pick an area that you want to zoom in on, click and drag click again and it zooms into the extents of the window that you've created. Now the development of the AutoCAD web app is fast. It's in a browser and it means that Autodesk can roll out any changes really, really quickly. So when you next log in, you might see some new features that weren't there before, which is really kind of cool. What you've also got is blocks support here. Like so, you've got block support so I can create a block. I can drag a block into my drawing if I want to. Same with XREFs, we've got XREF support as well. So XREF support is also very useful. You can attach an XREF. And like I said at the beginning of this part of the presentation, you can have those XREFs stored either in the web and mobile folders or in something like Dropbox or Google Drive and link them across. It's very quick and easy to do. But the best bit about all of this is it's in the cloud. You are taking AutoCAD on the road with you, either in a browser or on a mobile. You're going mobile with AutoCAD. And it means that your drawings can go mobile with you too. No more drawings on the bonnet of your car held down by bricks on a windy day where you're trying to work out which way's up on the drawing. It's a really, really fantastic little application. Now, when I mention collaboration as well, we can also utilize Open in Desktop. So what we could do here is we could be in a client's office and we've jumped into the AutoCAD web app to quickly show them the changes to the drawing. But if they've got AutoCAD desktop 
on their PC where you're using the browser, you can open it in their desktop app, in their regular AutoCAD, so that they can work on the drawing with you if need be. Notice as well, you can also share. You've got the share feature, which you'll recognize if you've got the latest version of AutoCAD, AutoCAD 2022. It's the same little paper plane icon. If I click on that, I can share a link to this drawing very quickly and easily. I can set it to view only or edit and save. There's the link there. You can see it right there. I can copy that link, pop it into an email, and someone else can then look at this particular drawing if they need to. Now, plotting as well is really quick and easy. It's just up here. There's plot there. You can plot to PDF from the AutoCAD web app. So you can print what's displayed, you can scale it to fit, plot style, paper size, portrait, landscape, and then plot to PDF. It's not as sophisticated as your desktop app. If you're going to do proper plotting runs and publishing runs, you want to do those from your desktop app. But if you need to do a quick plot to PDF for a client, while you're on site, or perhaps you're talking to the foreman on a building site, for example, and they've got, let's say, a Wi-Fi printer in one of the huts on site, you can jump in and do a quick PDF plot and say, this is what I'm talking about. So not only can you plot from the desktop app, but when you're out and mobile using the web app or the mobile app, the workflow is the same, you can plot to PDF quickly and easily. Very, very quick and easy to do. Now, I mentioned the status bar earlier as well. The status bar in the AutoCAD web app is down here. So you've got OSNAP, if I click on the arrow, you'll recognize that little menu straight away. It's core AutoCAD technology. And if I go to settings, that will take me into the object snap tab there, and you'll recognize those settings from earlier. So once you've done that, you hit done, and you're back there. OTRAC, object snap tracking. Ortho, you can switch it on or off. Polar is there as well. Again, with the polar settings, you'll recognize that menu. Click on settings, takes you back into the settings dialog in the tracking tab and click on done when you're done. You can also customize like you can in the desktop app. So I can customize and show you what needs to be on or off in the status bar. Notice coordinates is off. If I switch that on and then click on the customization icon, my coordinates now are on. You can just see them there bottom right of the screen. And as I move the crosshair around, it's giving me the coordinates there. I'm just gonna right click now and do a zoom extents again so that we can see all of the drawing. Now, one of the things that's really clever in a browser that the AutoCAD web app picks up is if you hit the back button on the browser. So let's have a look at that. What happens if I think to myself, oh, I'm done, and I'm just gonna hit the back button here. It's like, hang on a minute though. This drawing has unsafe changes. Do you want to save those changes before you go back a step in the AutoCAD web app? So what I can do there is I can just close that. And what I need to think about now is the fact that I've made some changes to this particular drawing. I've got save up here. So I can save it. That will save it with this file name or I can do a save as. So let's do a save as. So what we've got is the name of the drawing. I need to give it a revision. So I'm going to put an underscore and I'm just going to say rev 10 like that. Let's say it's revision 10. Nice, easy number. So I'm going to click on save and that will now save that drawing. Can you see all the text coming up? That's saved that drawing quickly and easily to my web and mobile folders. So you'll notice there's AutoCAD web and mobile. There's the folder where the drawings are, the 1031 Southeast Madison folder. Notice now the drawing name has changed with the Rev10 suffix just before the DWG. So what we've got there now is a saved drawing. Now this can take a few minutes to save, especially if you're using a complex drawing and you've got a low bandwidth, low internet signal, you might be using your phone data, for example. So you've got to think about that when you're saving stuff. Be aware that it could take a while to save. Don't just sort of click on save and think you're done. Make sure you check that it says up here, save. It's not saying saving dot, 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 because it's still saving. And you might suddenly just close your laptop, for example, and you haven't saved your changes. Make sure that it says save up there. Really important. Now you'll notice there's also a little question mark up there. That's your help as per the core AutoCAD technology. So that's all good to go. Now, what I'm going to do with this particular drawing is I'm going to create a trace. The trace functionality is new for the web and mobile apps with AutoCAD 2022, and it allows for collaboration with anybody using the AutoCAD desktop app.
So I'm going to create a new trace in the web app with this drawing, and I'm just going to call it Hot Desk Area 1. And it's really easy to create a trace. Trust me, I can click on trace like that and click on new trace. And it kind of goes a bit weird on the screen. Don't panic about that. That's fine. Because what we're going to do is we're now going to draw a rev cloud around the hot desk area. So it goes into annotate there. There's rev cloud like so. And I'm just going to click around this hot desk area and take my rev cloud around. And like so, it's a bit small. Maybe delete that. You want to make sure that it's big enough. Okay. So you go rev cloud, click. I'm going to drag that rev cloud around click there like so. So there's my rev cloud in place. Now you'll notice it's gone on the zero layer. So I can select the rev cloud and I'll pop that on my AU 2021 layer. Just scroll down a bit. There we go. Let's pop that on the appropriate layer like that. So it's on that layer. And when we're done with the trace, we click like so. So when I click on that trace now, it's there like that. And there's my trace. I can rename it as well. So what I can do is I can right click, rename. And what we'll do, we'll call that hot desk area one like so. So that's hot desk area one, press enter, and that's now hot desk area one. So you'll notice here as well, I've got an icon which shows edit on, like so, and edit off. So what it does is it's bringing the trace to the front, do that, it puts the trace to the back and brings the drawing to the front, just purely for visual purposes more than anything else. Now, when you're done with that trace, all you've got to do is hit the little tick. That's done. So that trace is now saved. You can see when I go to traces, I've got a trace in place like so. So I need to save this drawing. I don't need to do a save as it's going to be part of Rev 10. So I click on save and it's caching. Can you see that? And then saving. Make sure that you don't close down at that point. When it gets to save, you know that drawing is saved in your AutoCAD web and mobile folders or whichever cloud based repository you've got your drawings in quick and easy to do. Now, the benefits of all of this are on subscription, the AutoCAD web app is free, as is the mobile app. So that allows you to go mobile with the designs you're creating in the AutoCAD desktop app. It's available with full and LT versions of AutoCAD. It's all cloud-based, based on your Autodesk account login. And it allows you basically to collaborate really easily with stakeholders, clients, and working on projects with other team members. So when you're working with the AutoCAD web app, you are taking AutoCAD and your designs mobile. You're going mobile and you can take those designs on the road with you. So now we're in the second part of the video that goes along with this presentation for AU 2021. And I'm now in the AutoCAD 2022 desktop application. You can see the start tab there in the application. You can see the new revamped start tab set up in AutoCAD 2022 desktop as well. Now I'm logged in to my Autodesk account. You can tell that up here. There's my Autodesk account right there. And you can also tell down here, it's telling me welcome Sean. And there's the email address that I use to log in with my Autodesk account. Now the benefit I have here is I can now open up my web and mobile folders. There you go. There's open from web and mobile. I mentioned that in the presentation previously. So that's on the quick access toolbar. So if I click there, that will show me my web and mobile folders. Now bear in mind, I could be using a different cloud-based provider. It doesn't have to be the AutoCAD web and mobile folders. You could be using Dropbox, Google Drive, etc. But there's the folder layout that we had in the AutoCAD web app a moment ago. So there's my AU 2021 folder. I'll double click on that. And there's my drawings there, all available and ready to go. Now you'll remember we placed a trace in the Rev 10 drawing. So I select it, click on open, and that will now open up in my AutoCAD desktop app. And you can see it's exactly the same drawing. Can you see how the visual fidelity is the same as the web app? So the visual fidelity you've got in your AutoCAD desktop app is exactly the same in the web app. It's also the same in the mobile app as well, which means that all of this transitioning between apps is so easy because you're looking at the same information visually every time. Now I'm going to jump to the collaborate tab here on the ribbon in AutoCAD 2022. And surprise, surprise, there's a traces palette available. So when I click on that, you'll see the traces palette appears in the drawing area. And if I select hot desk area, there's my trace that I created and placed 
in the AutoCAD web app. So I've been mobile, I've used the AutoCAD web app, I've been out on site with a client, I've marked up that area with a trace, and now I'm back in the office, back at home, back at base, and I can see that trace that was placed in the drawing. This is the major benefit of taking AutoCAD mobile and taking it on the road with you. You don't have to take your AutoCAD desktop app with you. You can take the web app or the mobile app and apply these traces, apply changes to the drawings in the cloud, thus giving you an incredible amount of mobility with your AutoCAD drawings. Just like in the web app, I can bring the trace to the front or the back, as you can see, and if I click on the little tick there, it just closes down the trace in the drawing area. But you can see there's the traces palette, and if I hover over that, I can also see who created that particular trace, the creation date, when it was saved, etc. So I can even look there and see which user created that trace and have a dialogue with them about why they put that trace there, what's it for, what changes do I need to make on the drawing, etc. And then I can just close the traces palette and I'm back into the drawing as normal in my AutoCAD desktop app. So the benefit you've got here is that you've got all that collaboration and mobile benefit with the mobile and the web app taking your designs from the desktop app. So you are literally able to go on the road with AutoCAD and your designs in AutoCAD.